Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Angel and if you're new here, all I do is talk about books. And for today's video, we are going to be talking about the books that I wish I could go back and read for the first time again. I feel like there's just so much going on, like the dogs barking and then somebody decides to do yard work right now. So I'm going to start off really strong. The first book I wish that I could reread again for the first time Twisted Love by Anna Huang. If you guys know me, you guys know that I'm obsessed with this series. Mainly this book. I am so in love with Alex and Ava, or more so the Twisted series as a whole. If you don't know what Twisted Love is, Twisted Love is about Alex and Ava. Ava is literally the sweetest person in the whole wide world. And her brother's best friend, Alex, is like the grumpiest guy in the entire world. They literally tell him that his heart is made of ice and he's the coldest person ever. He literally doesn't have any friends besides Josh, which is Ava's brother. And let's just say Alex moves in right next door to Ava and their paths cross frequently. And to close that gap of awkwardness, Ava... The warm-hearted person she is, she extends her welcome to Alex by baking him cookies. And let's just say the rest is history. Ava and her group of friends came up with like this little fun operation game called Operation Emotion. And so with that being said, they come up with like different phases of emotions to see if Alex is actually a human or a robot. And so I would just say like that's like a little plot of the book. And I just think that it's such a funny concept that Anna Huang put in here because they're literally the blueprint of Grumpy Sunshine and I just love them so much. The next book I wish I could reread is Heartless by Elise Silver. This is a cowboy romance, also a single parent trope, forced proximity trope, babysitter trope, Grumpy Sunshine trope, Anyway, Heartless is about Kate and Willa. This is the second installment in the Chestnut Springs series. With that being said, they are mentioned in the first book, Flawless, which is about Kate's brother and Willa's best friend. So. But Heartless is about Kate and Willa. Kate is on the lookout for a new babysitter because the previous babysitter can't keep up with his five-year-old son anymore. So Summer, which was in the first book, offers up her best friend and summer basically vouched for her best friend to take the position and told Cade that willa has actually worked with a lot of rowdy people not knowing that summer meant that willa worked as a bartender and not a babysitter so right off the bat Cade is already on edge with willa already seeing that she's never worked with kids before but he starts to see that she's actually really great with his son and just seeing Willa and his son together really warms up his heart and he starts falling for Willa and vice versa. Let's just say it's such a steamy book because there's like a hot tub scene where the tension is there. It's literally simmering in the same hot tub as them. So I wish, wish, wish that something knocked me on the head so I could reread Heartless again because it was such a good book. We find out why Cade is so closed off and what happened to his son's mom and why he's so protective over his son. And we get to find out why Cade is the way he is because he's literally so protective of his son and, and he always stated that he had to grow up sooner than all of his other brothers because of how their mom died. And it was just a really sad backstory and we see why Kate is just so closed off and really doesn't trust anyone to watch his son. So, yeah. The next book is Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. I don't know if I said their name correctly, but yeah. I would hold up the whole stack of the Shatter Me series, but it's quite heavy. I am only holding one book, but I do mean the whole series. I did not think I was going to enjoy the dystopian genre books, but I did take a chance on it because I love the dystopian movies, such as like Maze Runner, Divergent, Hunger Games. So I would say that it's quite literally like Maze Runner and like Divergent and all that because of how the government is just so corrupt and how there's like a group of people try to rebel over the government because of how corrupt the government is 
And with that being said, that leads me to who Shatter Me is about. The whole series, it kind of hops around. There are many main characters, but I would say that the main, main characters of the Shatter Me series are about Juliet and Aaron Warner. Aaron isn't really the main character in this first book, actually. It's more so another character, but but he is like gradually like in the background. If you've read the series, you know what I mean. It's kind of hard to distinguish who's like the main character of this book because it's definitely not Aaron Warner and Juliet. But the whole series overall is about Aaron Warner and Juliet. But the series starts off following Juliet and how she's put into like this insane asylum because she has like these powers which is more so damaging to her because her power is that she has lethal touch and so she's put into this insane asylum for like a hundred or so days and she just starts going insane because she hasn't had any personal contact and so she becomes friends with I think like another cellmate or something I don't remember his part I do remember his part throughout the rest of the series but not this specific part but his name is Adam and so she remembers Adam from like school like a long time ago because their city or government is quite corrupt it's how I imagine it is like the maze runner cities you know just like really worn down and like burnt down and knocked down and all that you know like broken windows and like there's nobody there but it's like, you could tell like it's a city, you know, if that makes sense, like divergent cities. The Shatter Me series was such a good YA series to read to get your dystopian fix. I did not think that I was going to love it as much as I did. But like literally to this day, I cannot stop thinking about it. I wish I could reread it again and honestly just feel something again, I guess. The next book I wish I could reread is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is the second installment of the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. I actually don't know what the series is like officially called, but since this is the second book, I do recommend to read the first book first if you do find this book interesting. And so I can't really explain much about what this book is about, but overall, the series is about Evangeline and Jax. Evangeline had found out that her lover was being married to another and so she panicked and wanted to stop the wedding but honestly did not know how and so she went to the Prince of Hearts temple and literally prayed for help, prayed for any sort of commotion to stop the wedding and of course the Prince of Hearts is the one and only Jax. Jax is such a manipulating, conniving type of person, so he completely freezes everybody at the wedding and turns them into stone. And he's just like, what? Like, this is what you asked me to do. And of course, Evangeline is like, no, like, I asked you to stop the wedding, not turn them into stone. And so basically, it just kind of led on from there. It's such a good enemies to lovers book. Like this is the second book and they have not turned to lovers yet, but you could just sense the tension and you could, there are moments where Jax and Evangeline kind of confess their love for each other or confess that they do care for one another, but there's always like something in the way and they just can't be together. Also the third book, to this series is coming out I think in September so I really regret reading this so early on in the year I don't even know how I'm patiently waiting for September because I need to know what happens next because it definitely leaves off on a cliffhanger and honestly you're not gonna know what to do with the rest of your life until the third book comes out and I don't know my last book that I wish I could reread is my current read. So, I mean, it doesn't make sense, but I already feel the urge to put this in like my reread pile for like next month. But it's My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. 
I am so obsessed with Romeo and Dallas. Their banter is everything. Their tension is everything. I'm just so obsessed with them. But this is like a newer release for LJ Shen and Parker S. Huntington. So if you want to start reading their book and start somewhere that's more recent, My Dark Romeo is it. Because Romeo, do not even get me started with him because he is the funniest most driest guy ever but i don't know like he's so his humor is so dry but it's there anyway my dark romeo is about dallas and romeo dallas has been arranged to marry this guy like since forever and so literally her whole life has just been tied to this other guy and they i'm guessing they are like around the same age because they do talk here and there they do like weekly talks or whatever and let's just say that she goes to a debutante ball and at that ball it's kind of where all the daughters are being showcased to suitors but not dallas okay she's there with a big engagement ring on but there is chatter going on in the ballroom about this romeo costa guy romeo walks in to the ball and literally is a showstopper Everybody is like staring at him because of how handsome he is and Dallas is literally, she's so unfazed, but she can't deny that he's gorgeous, okay? And let's just say that Romeo has like a proposition for Dallas for her last hurrah before she gets married and he tells her to meet him in the garden in like 10 minutes and so she's like debating she's like oh my god like i'm engaged soon to be married am i should i really be doing this and she's kind of having like this internal battle she's like thinking like okay well my fiance is isn't probably as innocent as as i think he is like i've seen tabloids of him with like other women blah 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 she's like screw it i'm gonna go out and meet romeo and see what he's all about let's just say they kiss and they get a little touchy-feely and they lean up against this wall that happens to be a curtain and the curtain rips wide open and let's just say all of the attendees at the debutante ball sees them kissing and groping each other so yeah you can kind of see where that forced marriage is going to come into play like romeo's literally talking to dallas's dad like well i ruined your daughter so let me marry her just to get a one-up on her fiance because they're like rivals in like the business world or whatever something like that i just love it so much that i know that i'm going to have to do a reread in a month or two and that is the end of today's video. Thank you guys for watching and please stay tuned for more. Bye!